there's one more other thing, of course, and that's the context. It's not only the content, the words that the patient uses, not only the information that he uses, but the way the information comes to you. The way uh, an, a patient belonging to the animal kingdom behaves during case taking. Mm -hmm. And the context in general will give us extra information, will help us and will uh, confirm, in the ideal case, our information, our content, all will contradict it and then we have to go, as I told before in a session on the anamnesis, we have to go for the context. The context is more reliable because it's less uh, controlled. So in general, the nozodes and mineral cases who belong to the second dimension are more, more or less hmm, um, straightforward one subject, this is very generalizing, I will go into more details on this in these sessions, but as a general feature, there are one problem, and this one problem will be looked at from all, uh, all sizes, all, all sides and all directions, and then we will have a general idea of this one thing. And in the consultation, it, it is as if the patient builds the one brick upon the other of this particular building, and this is the problem. The three-dimensional cases, which are plants, uh, animals, and even human uh, products, uh, sarcodes, are in general more complex. They have many more stories. Those, in general, are the patients that tell you so much that you don't know what to do, you're overwhelmed by the simple bulk of information you get. They will tell you a lot of details, they will tell you a lot of stories, a lot of anecdotes. And in general, in general, the patient is, how do you say, interesting. You not, it's very seldom you get a boring animal case. Somehow they know how to attract your attention. An animal case will relate to you. They will make sure that they have eye contact or somehow they will be very careful to spot your um, reaction, to know what impression they make on you. This rec I recall a case where um, a man came in, he was uh, in his 50s, I guess, yeah, he was in his 50s, and the first thing I saw was that his hair was um, dyed in black. So normally he probably has grey or greyish hair, but it was very black. So you could see it was unnatural, which is, at least in our country, quite rare. Normally men don't dye their hair when they're not in, let's say, show business. But he was a teacher, he was a professor. So it was quite uncommon. And during consultation, very often, or more often than would be natural, he made a remark like, like your hair is good looking, eh? did you have a haircut? Or uh, this kind of um, uh, pullover you're wearing uh, is good on you, this color uh, suits you. And it, makes me a little, it made me a little bit uncomfortable because it is not done in a consultation to have this reaction, this positive critiques on how I look, on my looks, because that's not the point. And I could see that his looks were important because his hair was colored and so it was about our looks and he was in a position, uh, not in a position, to, to tell me how I look because I'm his homeopath. Eh? It was friendly but it was inappropriate. And this is typical for an animal case. I, to make clear, I'm a man, eh? you're a woman, I've seen your, you know, your, I mention how you look and I give some comments on it. Eh? And somehow he would convey, try to convey the message and I like your looks. Eh? And all this is very inappropriate in a homeopathic consultation. Eh? This was his way to relate, relate in a positive way. But in general the patient will look for the attention of, to make sure you are very attentive, to make sure that he has um, uh, somehow control right, on your reactions, 
and to let you know that he has, he or she. In a, a, a case of a female patient, very often they are, they are um, let's say, they spend a lot of uh, attention to their looks. So in the books in the beginning, we, we had uh, uh, prescriptions of mostly uh, snake cases and they said the women are always overdressed and attention seeking and, and showing all, all, all what they have and they have a lot of jewelry and they have a lot of uh, colorful clothes and sometimes they have, sometimes they have it. A little bit depending on the sub kingdom, but in general, we can say there's more than average attention to their looks, the way their hair looks, the makeup, the the clothes, male or female, and jewelry. Yes, sometimes a lot, sometimes a little, but they like to make themselves beautiful. Hmm? That's the, the general idea. Then their talk is animated. The talk is vivacious, most of the time it's a lot of humor, they have a lot of words, they have a lot of expressions, and they have lively descriptions, a lot of imagination, and your attention is captured, and that is what they try, to capture your attention. So you, know, you don't get bored. Somehow you're, how do you say, we say they're more or less charismatic persons, not always, but a lot of them are they have this quality, this hypnotizing, but this is a big word, quality, to make sure to have your attention. Mm -hmm. Then, the way the consultation evolves is they most, mostly don't always throw the, all the cards in the beginning, but they give you piece by piece. This means, maybe you know pretty soon you're in Animal Kingdom, but which animal? They will give you, let's say, a tail, a little bit low. later they will give you an ear, then a bit later they will give you a fur or feathers, a little bit later they will give you a foot, and it's only by assembling the pieces hmm, that you know in the end, oh, this is the animal. Of course, this is a picture, and they won't do it literally. But in one story, one level, one example, you will get a hint to a part of an animal quality. Another story, another level, another hint, another animal, or another animal quality. For instance, um, very anxious about the children. Mm -hmm. Then in the, let's say, the chief complaint, there will be another animal quality. Mm -hmm. And then you hear a word like, for instance, poison. So again, you get one quality. It is an animal with this, 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 and this. And only by assembling all those pieces, in the end, you will recognize it. And that's mostly how an animal case evolves. So it's not this one thing, this more or less simple line in which you can condense a mineral problem, but it's like more like a puzzle and you get as I said, one foot, one foot, a tail, and in the end you see, ah, oh, it's a giraffe. When we sure we need an, a remedy from the animal kingdom, now we have another problem. Which sub-kingdom sub to choose? Because there are, of course, very, very many animal remedies. So, in our Materia Medica, they are un underrepresented. Let's say if we have a thousand remedies, then there are 850 plant remedies uh, in general and there will be a hundred something uh, mineral remedies and uh, imponderables and uh, combinations and only maybe 10, 20, 30 animal remedies. About Among the remedies that we know well, Lachesis, Sepia, Tarantula, Apis and Lacaninum, we have at least one representative of different sub-kingdoms. That's the good news. Let's start with maybe the most well-known animal remedy, Lachesis. If we study this remedy, we see, we know now, that a lot of the symptoms that are um, listed for Lachesis are actually general animal remedies 
um, rubrics or general snake rubrics like dictatorial or anger or biting, violence, desire to kill, escape, etc. By studying more snakes, even from our classical books like Crotalus horridus or Crotalus cascavella, Obotrops, Odendroaspis, Vipera and more snakes, then we can have a more general snake picture. And this general snake picture, and you can see it also in the schemes, give us, let's say, general themes and words. For instance, we know they are manipulating, they are loquacious, they have deceitful, cunning uh, characteristics, um, the plotting and the hiding is well known of the snake remedies in general. Of course, the violence with the rage and the desire to kill. Uh, and on the other hand, the fear of attack and the fear of death. We have the outspoken sexuality in the snake remedies. We have the um, ambush and the waiting for the opportunity, the suddenness as well. We have the uh, problems with the throat, with the choking, and we know the, the tongue, the split tongue, is very uh, important in snake talk and behavior. Mm. They are calculative, they are manipulative, and they have, as we say, a split tongue. They can be very poisonous. So this gives us a more general, understandable, and maybe easy to detect um, uh, overall picture of the snakes. Once you have the sub-kingdom, then it would be too long for this session to explain in all details or to discuss all the different snakes. So the next step is to go to the Materia Medica and study the best suitable rubrics. We have warm snakes and cold snakes, so that's the differentiation. We have poisonous snakes or non-poisonous snakes, uh, strangulating snakes. Uh, so that's another differentiation to make. We have um, groups like the, the group belonging to the um, Lachesis, the Lachesis group or the Crotalus group or the Viperas. So we have to discern which is the main group and we should go to the modern proofings. We have a lot of modern proofings of snakes now and then, then we can go for the rubrics as we always do in a classical repertorization. Another well-known sub-kingdom from our classical Materia Medica is the kingdom of the spiders. And we know this kingdom, or this sub-kingdom, by the best-known remedy, the representative is Tarantula. Uh, if we study other, also in our classical books mentioned remedies like Aranea, Aranea Ixobola, Aranea Diadema, uh, Tiridion, um, Atrax Robusta, uh, Latrodectus Mactans, Loxoceles Reclusa and others, then we get a more generalized spider picture and we know more or less the keywords which are violence, desire to kill again, poison, the same as we heard in the snake kingdom. They are known for being very restless, uh, moving very fast, very speedy, attention seeking behavior by dancing and singing and you know the name of tarantula is due to the, the dance. Eh? Uh, that would be, that is so-called, um, how do you say, um, saving for people who were uh, intoxicated. But there's also the paralysis, there is the pretending and the cunning behavior, the deceitful behavior, you know, the hiding, um, and the violence, and also waiting for an occasion. So this is the more or less general spider uh, picture, and again, it would take us too far to go into details to determine which spider you need because it is always the last thing to do is to go to the Materia Medica and to check. But we have groups in the sub-kingdoms, even we have groups and this will give us at least some hint where to look. We have spiders, uh, web spiders, hmm? then if, if we know we need a web spider we don't have to study the others. So how how can we know we need a web spider? It's quite simple. There must be a web in the case. Not always the person will literally say something like I will spin a web or I will try to catch him in a web or, or they, they made a web and they caught me. 
but sometimes they do and then it's easy but if they don't it can also be a, a referring to something sticky and that is often heard because the web is sticky and the person can feel and use the word sticky um, in an inappropriate way once I heard the uh, patients say these memories are so sticky which is a very uncommon expression at least in our language we don't have sticky memories eh? or they feel other people are sticky or uh, something is sticking to them I even heard the patient said to her um, uh, how to say uh, she wasn't very happy with it but she said uh, she said I can't find uh, a partner who will stick around long enough. This, but this was an attracts case. So either the web will be, be there directly or in, indirectly. And it can also be a reference to ropes or threads that can make you think about a web when you're already, already in spider uh, sub-kingdom and you already listen for which spider you need. Hmm? So it's not because a person says, I'm losing my thread that he needs, needs a spider. But if you're already in Spider Kingdom and he's talking about threads, you might as well need a web spider. Another hint is, and I only heard it in web spider cases, that they talk about catapulting. Because that is exactly what the spiders do, the araneas. Uh, they have a web and if they want to move, they make a thread. And all spiders spin a thread, eh? and in the wind they like they are blown with the wind. It's almost like the wind catapults them or shoots them to another place, and there uh, they land and they can uh, make a web or whatever. So this is another uh, hint for a web spider. We have uh, trapdoor spiders, and they most likely will talk about the trap or the ambush or the being hidden. But all spiders hide eh? and very quickly they come into action and then they they uh, jump on their uh, prey and then they take their prey into their their uh, hole or you have these uh, wolf spiders like the tarantula and they're actually running after their prey so there must be something that points to a specific group within the spiders and then you have to make your choice between the few representatives we have because there are, I don't know, 80,000 spiders or something and we have 10 or 15 representatives in our Materia America but mostly that will do because, you know, when we are close enough we are, we are able to um, make a resonance, a healing resonance in our patients. So far, so good. We think now we have two distinct pictures of two different sub-kingdoms. The snakes we know more or less well, we are more familiar, familiar with, and the spiders. On the one hand, the snakes who are um, legless creatures, uh, big creatures in general, crawling on the floor, making this impression of uh, danger, very scary creatures with a smooth skin and sometimes very colorful. And on the other hand, we have these insect-like spiders these, with their eight legs, they're small, in general small creatures uh, hiding everywhere also scary to us but completely different species we can read a lot about their way of living and all kinds of differences but I uh, deliberately uh, limited myself to the keywords from the provings and the way they present in cases and then we see that in fact there are a lot of similarities there is a lot of resemblance when people start to tell about their stories and their problems and then we hear the same words coming up. I can give you a few examples and then you will see how very often we can be confused between spiders and snakes. Although we think we wouldn't because the animals themselves are so different and their way of living is so different. But in practice, in daily practice, when the patient sits in front of us, we hear for instance the word uh, we hear them talking about um, a problem or we hear them talking that they are having a fight so our attention is going to animal kingdom and then we hear they are suspicious, suspicious about other people, they are manipulative or deceitful or they say the others are and, and they feel persecuted and it's still the same for snakes and spiders. 
the, those characteristics apply to both of um, those kingdoms. We can have the, uh, the patient in front of us, we can have an attention-seeking uh, patient, but still this applies as well to snakes as to spiders. They can talk a lot, be loquacious, same for both. We can feel or we can hear that there's a lot of sexuality or the problems in this area, on the area of sexuality in their life or in their physical complaints, apply to both. We can have an element of poison. Again, we can't differentiate on the poison whether we have a snake or a spider. The fears can be very common. They can have a fear of attack or they can have the feeling of attack or they have maybe have the wish or the dreams about an attack or uh, the fear to be killed or dreams about killing or being killed. Um, the way they will uh, they feel persecuted or they feel of fear to be killed can be by poison, as I already said, but also by a sudden attack. And the suddenness is snake and spiders all the same, or it can be ambush all the same. The, uh, their reaction can be to hide. It's the same for both and wait for the good moment. You know, that's what they do. They hide, they um, want to revenge both of them, snakes and spiders, and they wait for the good moment. Yeah. Mostly, uh, in a snake case, they will need to be provoked. Hmm? You have to provoke them once, provoke them twice, and then the third time they will strike. Eh? And this is more or less um, uh, characteristic for a snake. Not all snakes, but there are snakes that want to provoke or feel provoked and only attack when provoked. And in a, in a, a spider case, there's a different way, as I already explained, to, um, to get the prey. Eh? Um, but we can hear words about deceitfulness, uh, um, cunning, mm, hiding things, manipulating, planning, uh, revengefulness, and all this is snake as well as spider. So, in the schemes, I try to uh, leave out the words, or most of the key words that they have in common and concentrate on the differences because this is a practical, uh, for practical um, use, what I'm trying to do. The, the waterproof words uh, for snakes and spiders, not the only ones, but the differentiating ones. Because the common ones you can find in your books and often you will see that you have those words and still cannot differentiate between those two sub-kingdoms. Now let us go in in a little bit more detail in the difference because that is actually where what we try to do. Differentiate between uh, kingdoms and sub-kingdoms and at least come to a result of one remedy. So the keyword in any spider case when you have a male patient is the feeling of female domination, the delusion, I can say, that females are dominating and they are dominating by their sexuality. That's the uh, outspoken or unconscious belief of, let's say, the spider man. And we know in uh, Spider Kingdom how uh, uh, a sexual encounter often ends uh, for the man, for the male. So the idea is that since females, since women, are more powerful, dominating, eh, the reaction is um, either fear or hatred. And mostly it's a mixture. Eh? It's because they are fearful, they feel hatred and revenge. But the, the idea is they're much more powerful than, than the dominating, and they're dominating by the sexuality. If you have a female uh, spider uh, remedy, then the, um, if they have anything at all with sexuality, and mostly they have, they will be sensitive to exploitation in this area. They don't have to, uh, they, they don't have to have their own experience, but they will be sensitive in general. They will, in the outside world, project a sensitivity to prostitution, to um, mutilation, to violence done to. Uh, uh, women and especially on a sexual um, a sexual area. So the exploitation, the domination and the uh, prostitution will be sensitive areas for 
female uh, spiders. You don't have this in snakes. I, as far as I can see, they don't feel this um, female domination at all. They will advertise their, let's say, sexual uh, qualities. The, they're more advertising, the snakes in general. Yeah. But it's not that they feel, the female snakes, that they are uh, more dominant, that they are dominating to males, not at all. So I think this is characteristic and it's a differentiating issue between uh, spiders and snakes. But uh, there are more. Yeah? In general, I, I told you, the spiders feel small and powerless. And although the snakes are mostly shy and mostly hiding, yeah? when provoked they will attack and then they attack to the finish. It's, it's to get you hmm? and to finish you off. Yeah? Spiders, since they feel small and powerless, they will have to hide and wait for the good moment use all kinds of tricks eh, and webs and traps uh, in order to have their sudden attack. And their fear is to be crushed. Their fear is to be um, uh, stepped upon eh, or to be sucked up. And this is, of course, exactly what they do with their prey. Eh? They wrap or they catch them and they take them to their um, hole or they wrap them up and then they suck them. They don't eat the prey actually, but they put poison in it or enzymes and, and it makes the insides liquid and then they can suck it like a milkshake. This is typical for spiders. Snakes don't do that. They can bite, strike, poison eh, or shock, but they don't suck their prey. Um, the teasing is more typical for spiders. The snakes are not that teasing. As I told you, they are mostly shy, they hide, and they only attack when provoked. In general, spiders have a tendency for hysteria. And you don't see that so much in snakes. In snakes, I would um, expect more control, in general, more control, and um, have a problem with this two wills, which is a whole different thing. They have this antagonism itself, you know this from Lachesis, but it's general for snakes. And they have this opposition within themselves. It is as if they have two trains of thoughts. Hmm? That's classical rubrics. Or they have two wills and they have this contradiction of wills within themselves. This is more typical snake than spider. Hmm? We also see this in the split tongue. We say they have a split tongue, which means that they have a poisonous tongue or a dirty tongue, and very often they're jealous. They talk with jealousy, whether it's open or it's more hidden. And also, this is more towards snakes than spiders. It's not that spiders can't be jealous, but snakes more often uh, blame others to be jealous, but they have this jealousy in, in themselves. Um, they have a quality of clairvoyance, very often, snakes, you know, they have a third eye, and we don't see that in spiders. So again, that's a differentiation between the two. The violence and the rage is mostly more outspoken in snakes than in spiders. Spiders usually feel powerless, small, and hide, and wait for the right moment to poison you, eh? or to get you in their web. But they don't show this open, openly, this violence or this rage. Loquacity mostly is more toward the side of the snakes. They're not all that talkative, but most of them are. And they are sensitive to language. They like to use language and they are sensitive to a good language. Yeah? This is not so much in, in spiders. Another feature is that spiders are known to be very restless but they have moments of inertia. And with this inertia, I mean they don't move at all. They don't do anything at all. They're just incapable of doing anything. Hmm? And this is um, uh, moments of inertia. And then they have more moments when they move, they have this restless, speedy activity. Hmm? What we know of spiders, but they're not restless and speedy all of the time. But if they are moving, it is this speedy movement we know of. Spiders. Eh? So the suddenness is in both, but the speediness is more in spiders. And of course, then we have the physical complaints, which can uh, be a differentiating factor for the two subkingdoms. In spiders in general, we have a lot of um, 
excruciating pains, neuro neurological pains, cramping pains are very specific for spiders, whereas in snakes we expect more the congestion, of course the throat problems, uh, the shocking and, and the constriction at the throat or the inability to have anything closed around the, the neck, problems with neck and throat and inflammation and everything and the congestion in general. It can be a venous congestion, can be something with the arteries or a feeling of congestion. Mostly spiders are cold remedies and the most of the snakes are hot-blooded. But there are exceptions. Viperas, for instance, can be cold-blooded as well. So you have to see where is the, 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 the emphasis of the case and then you have this clear differentiating topics that would make it capable for you to make a choice between the two. That will be it for the fourth session. Now we have learned the differences between spider and snake remedies. Of course, there are many other animal sub kingdoms as the birds, the insects, the mammals, the sea creatures. In the next session, we will learn more about the specific characteristics of mammals and of bird remedies and how to differentiate between bird remedies and insects. So, gradually, we will come to know the complete animal kingdom.